Good afternoon. Uh, today's Saturday, 9-11-2021. In yesterday's morning class, we were looking at Chapter 2 in Computer Communications, uh, looking at the application layer protocols for the first time. Uh, I had at the last moment before the class meeting changed my platform from my Windows 10 box to my Mac Mini because I ended up doing the conference from home. That kind of messed me up a little because I didn't have the right tools on the Macintosh. Uh, I was lacking Telnet. I had just installed Wireshark and it was a newer version. So there were a couple of things that were unfamiliar and I wasn't thinking well on my feet. So I thought, well, why don't I go back and I'll do a quick screencast to show you what I wanted to about Telnet. So I'll do it on the Mac Mini using Mac OS X. That's a Unix variant. And this also works in Linux. Uh, I'll show you a new command line packet capture, uh, TCP dump, which predates Wireshark. And then for the Windows 10 folks, I will make another short video on the Windows 10 platform. All right, let's go see what this looks like. Now I want to go get Telnet for Mac. And so I figured out how to get that. So I'm going to say build Telnet from source, Mac OS X. And I found this here at OS X Daily. And then I'm going to go down to right about here where it says restoring. It's about a third or two, a third or two fifths of the way down. Um, restoring Telnet to Mac OS Mojave and High Sierra by compiling Telnet from source. So the first thing I want to do is I want to download the latest iNet Utils package. So I'll copy this and go to my terminal window and let me let me blow this up so it's easier to see. Okay, I'll paste this in and there's a little typo in the in the article. So we want a capital O. Okay, so it's downloading it and I should be in my home directory. I am. Okay, and then let me just slide this over. And then they want us to extract the tar archive. So if we if we take a look, you can see here I have this inet utils dash one dot nine dot four dot tar which stands for tape archive but we don't you guys don't use tapes these days and then dot gz is gzip so it's compressed tar archive and so to blow that thing up we're going to use this tar extract verbose uh, encrypted and the file name is inet utils and then I can just tab over so that's going to uh, extract and create this directory here. So if we look long ways, we should see uh, inet utils 1.9.4. That's a directory. So they're going to change directory in here. Okay, so there I am. Here's all the files and stuff. And then we're going to issue the configure command. So dot for current directory configure. And we'll let that run. It does a whole bunch of compatibility checks um, and this will run for probably 15 or 20 seconds at least. Okay that's done and I purposely didn't talk so I can compress the video for that run. Now I'm going to type make and that will uh, build Telnet. It also built a whole bunch of other stuff too. And then uh, I'm not root right now. Uh, I'm just Brett. So now I'll say sudo minus, uh, oh sorry, I'm not going to use minus i, sudo make install. So this will um, elevate uh, me to a privileged user and then call the make file, which will install Telnet. In fact, let me show you that um, Telnet does, is not found. So I'm going to say sudo make install. And then it's challenging me for my password. Okay. And now if I say telnet, 
ta-da, I have Telnet. So that's where we wanted to get. And now, uh, let me show you what I wanted to show, show you in class. So Telnet is uh, an old terminal protocol that you would use to remote into a mainframe or mini computer over uh, a network, one of the very first and early networks. Um, it's still used uh, in some, you know, some areas for managing network switches and routers and different things, but it's it's kind of frowned upon now because everything that um, goes across the wire is in clear text and so if somebody's sniffing you they can grab your credentials username and password in clear text they don't have to decrypt it or anything so there's really no confidentiality but telnet is still a good protocol for teaching and for um, you know letting you see how things used to work and why uh, things have changed a little bit uh, or actually quite a bit so now I want to go um, to go back to my home directory and I'm going to tell net to telehack.com and this is a site that maintains uh, telnet compatible stuff and I'm going to run the Star Wars movie uh, episode 4 I think it was released in 97 or 1977 sorry and so somebody went to all the effort to put the whole Star Wars movie uh, together as ASCII art. <laughs> so don't ask me why, but they did. But it's really great for our purposes because we can run Star Wars Episode Four in the background there, pursued by the Empire's sinister agents. Now, let me open another terminal underneath. And rather than using Wireshark, I'm going to show you uh, TCP dump. So let me expand this so that you can see the see it better on the recording. I'll shrink this a little bit so it fits. Okay, so you can see the movie going by up above. Let me let me size this a little bit better. And I'll make this a little bigger. We don't want to miss parts the important parts of the movie. There we go. Okay, and I'll shrink this down. So the movie's playing up there. Now down here, I'm going to issue a command called TCP dump minus capital D. And that's going to show me, let me shrink this a little bit. Okay, that's going to show me my interfaces. And so I think I want EN1. Um, that's my wireless. And if you're wondering, well, how do I know that? I could do um, IP link, oops, sorry, IF config. And if I look around, uh, EN1 has an IP address. That's my, you know, my home network. And so I recognize that. So I know that EN1 is the interface that I'm actually doing my Wi-Fi over. So I'm gonna say TCP dump minus capital D and EN1 is interface number four. Okay, so then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say TCP dump minus I4. That's the interface number. And then I'm going to say um, minus A. And that minus A will eliminate uh, the link layer information around the packets I'm receiving from Telehack. And then I'm going to say port 23 because that's the Telnet port. And what that will do is tell TCP dump not to display packets unless they have either a source port or a destination port of 23, which is the Telnet protocol. So you can see down below I'm capturing the packets, and because the payload of the packets is ASCII text, it prints out really well. And you can see up above that we will get the packets, uh, and up on top you'll see a slight lag, if any lag, you'll see a slight lag uh, in the movie because the packets are coming in uh, and being shown to us down below there. But basically it looks like it's pretty much in sync. 
So then I could um, also add a minus V. Let me try it here. And that gives me a verbose mode, and that'll add a little bit more data on uh, about the packets. Or I can just stop it and you know go back. Now, if I didn't if I didn't want to see the actual uh, payload, I get rid of the minus a, and now I'm going to see an abbreviated conversation going back and forth, and you can see my IP address. I'm I'm talking. I'm receiving on port 51,099, but I'm talking to hella, telehack.com on the .telnet port, which is port 23. So if I wanted to, I could say minus NNN. And now you can see, if you look at the packets, that instead of .telnet, it's saying .23, which is the telnet port. Instead of telehack.com, you're seeing 64.13.139. That's because this minus NNN says don't don't change the names of the IP addresses. You know, don't try and resolve them. Uh, don't try and resolve the port numbers. If I take that off, then you'll notice again that now, if there's a name associated with this IP, it's able to look it up. So that's telehack.com, and instead of port 23, it's reporting telnet. On mine, it doesn't have any effect because I don't have a name mapping for 192.168.2.94, nor is there a well-known um, name for port number 51,099. That just happens to be the port that my box opened up to receive this information back. Okay, so um, I'm going to run off and do a similar uh, movie for the Windows folks that have to use TCB dump, the free version. Thanks for listening.